like to have you all stand up for a moment anyway. There we go. Now, let's stretch a little bit. It's morning. We can use, all use this stretch. Reach for the ceiling. Keep reaching. Feel like you could just stretch yourself up there and touch those tiles. And when you can't stand it a moment longer, uh, there we go. Let them down. Good. Now, do some big rolls with those shoulders. Do it very slowly. You want to feel like your shoulder blades are going to meet in the back and then in the front. Now, go the other way. That's it. Really stretch them out. Good. Now, everybody drop your head to your chest and slowly roll it to one shoulder. I don't care which. Roll it to the shoulder and then roll it to your back like you explained. Just lay there on your back and then to the other shoulder, slowly, and then forward. Now go the opposite direction you just went, to the shoulder, to the back, to the other shoulder, and down. Good. If you can give yourself enough room to do this, it's a little tight in here, I want you to just kind of hang like a rag doll. And just let those arms hang there and feel that stretch in your lower back. And then I want you to come up very slowly like you're building your spine up one piece at a time. Very, very slowly. Keep your head down. And just Slow, slow, slow. And when you get to where your shoulders are back in a normal position, you roll your head up. There you go. All right. So we got the blood moving now. All right. So now the next thing I want to work on a little bit is breathing. I want to just... Do some independent breathing exercises. Breath is the fuel that makes the voice work. So we have to have a good breathing mechanism. First, check your posture. Make sure that you're standing very tall. Now, we don't want military posture, but we want a slightly elevated rib cage, like you have a string attached here and a string attached here like a marionette, and it's pulling you up and you feel almost like you're suspended above the floor. Good. Your head, I want you to look out like you're standing on the beach. Like you're looking at where the water meets the sky. Good. Now I want you to let your jaw drop open. And I want you to feel inside like it, you're stifling a yawn. Some of you may even yawn a little bit, and that's okay. All the time you sing, you should feel openness in your throat. Like the kind of yawn you're at Aunt Mary's tea party, and you don't want her to see you yawn. So you keep it inside all the time. There you go. Good. Now, as you're standing there with that wide open space, I want you to let your belly drop to the floor, if it were possible and take a big breath and let it out. In and out. Do it through your open mouth. Get that mouth, that jaw dropped open. Drop and release. That's it. When you breathe, everything's down here. You want to place that breath as low as possible. We don't want any shoulders. This is gaspy breathing breath, breathing, and it's inefficient. And if you notice sometimes, if you have trouble making it through some of the phrases in our book, and there are some long ones, 
Check your breathing, check your posture, make sure you're up so that you can really take a full breath. Everybody breathe in again. And release. Good. Now we're going to exhale on the letter S. And I'm going to count. And when you've run out of breath, just hold up a finger. Okay, so here we go. Take that low breath. Oh, let's do that again. I'm, you know, I'm doing that again because I saw several people go like this. Put these down. Shoulders have nothing to do with it. They are just hanging there. Your arms are like sacks of flour. Now, let's take that breath again. Ready? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, fifteen, twenty. Wow, good. Good, we had a little bit of a range there from about 6 to 20, but let's try that again. Let's see if you got 6 this time, go for 7. If you got 20, go for 21. Try it again one more time. Stand nice and tall. Look at that horizon. Drop the belly. Oop, 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 oop. <laughs> I want you up already. There you are. There, you're up already. That's it. Now take your breath drop. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four, fifteen, six. 17, 18, 21, 2, 3, 4. Good. You all made an improvement that time. This is a very, very simple little exercise you can do. You can count or you can time yourself with a, with a watch. If you get 15 seconds, you go for 16 the next time. You're always looking to enhance your capacity as you're breathing. I'm going to hand out some breathing exercises to you. This is a variation of number one. Variation two we won't do today because it requires <coughs> laying down on the floor. You can do that at home. It's got a good explanation. But as you're breathing out, you should feel constant expansion all the time. Like you're trying to take in more breath. We don't want to push the breath out by going like this, because then we've lost it all. But if we feel like we're constantly expanding, then we have a better control over our breath. I would urge you to spend some time, a little bit of time every day. I tell my voice students, my private students, do this in bed at night before you go to sleep. Lay on your back, put a nice big book on your tummy, and as you do this exercise, try to push that book up to the ceiling. If you do this, you will increase your capacity, and you will be able to sing longer and longer phrases. And, and as I said, we know some of the phrases in our sung prayer are quite long. Quite long. So this is a good exercise to do. Now let's warm up the voice. <clears throat> I'd like to start with just a simple humming exercise. First though, if you had to classify your voice as soprano, alto, tenor, or bass, how many sopranos do we have here? How many altos? Okay, and I ask that because there are female tenors. How many tenors? Okay, and the rest of you are bass, baritone. Okay, good. So I want to start with just a simple humming exercise. So get that posture up, okay? Posture, check it all the time. Check your canter stand. I yell at my choir all the time about this because our canter stands are real low and they're all singing like this. Very bad for breathing, very bad for projection. Q 
Keep that posture up. Drop your mouth open. And now, don't close your jaw, just bring your lips together. And hum. Ready? Here we go. Good. As you hum, send the sound up through the ceiling. Articulators in speech or singing? What parts of the anatomy? Vowels. Hmm? Vowels. Well, vowels are a, a type of letter we use, but the principal articulators of speech, I'm talking about parts of the anatomy. Tongue, the tongue, the roof of your mouth. Well, the tongue is one. Lips. The lips, and there's one more. <clears throat> teeth. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Everybody <laughs> say that. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth. Good. Now, one of the things I want you to get used to is not using the jaw to articulate. The jaw articulates nothing. It is not an articulator of speech. And I want you to cultivate this relaxed jaw all the time you sing. You should feel like the bottom half of your face has just gone numb all the time. Keep that jaw open. Most of the time you sing, you should remain open 90% of the time while you're singing. 95% open. Because you have to breathe through the open mouth and you have to prepare to sing through the open mouth. So, let's get these articulators moving. <clears throat> Doodly 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 do. Everybody say that. Doodly 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 do. Okay, we're gonna get it going fast here. Ready? Doodly 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 do. Doodly 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 do. Doodly 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 do. Now this is mostly the tongue. Doodly 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 doodly. Do you see my jaw moving much? Doodly 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 doodly. Hardly at all. Keep your jaw hanging, all with the tongue. Do that again one more time. Ready? Doodly 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 do. Doodly 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 do. Doodly 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 do. Stick your tongue out. Stick it out several times in a row. The tongue, I'm going to tell you to do something very strange. You're going to exercise your tongue. I want you to spend some time stretching that out before you sing. There's a big muscle back there called the vellum. And that muscle, just like any other muscle, if we're going to use our tongue to articulate, needs to be loose. Very, very loose. So this doodly doodly do is one good exercise. Another one I want to do is everybody say, ah. Say that. Ah. Now keep that ah shape and say, la la. La la. 
Now I don't want to see any jaws moving. Watch mine. La la. Say that. La la. la, la. And now no tensing it. Relax. Practice this in front of a mirror. One of the surest signs of jaw tension is the emergence of the lower teeth. If you look at yourself singing and you see lots of lower teeth, you are tensing your jaw. You should look like you have no lower teeth. There you go. Now say la la la. La la la. La 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 la. La 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 la. La la la. Good. Let's get that tongue moving with the la 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 la. La 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 You're gonna breathe through that open mouth. We don't want that jaw involved at all. Do that one more time. Ready? Everybody stay open. Say ah. It's a lovely day. Ah. There we go. And la 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 exercises. There are tongue consonants. L, N, say na na. Na na na. Same as the L. No jaw. Say da da. Da da. Da da. Da da da. Ta ta. Ta ta ta. T's harder. I I move a little bit on the T too. Practice tongue consonants. L, N. D and T, with a totally slack, relaxed jaw. Okay? So, we're a little bit warmed up. We're going to do some more singing here. Sit down for just a minute. I've given you the breathing exercises that are here. I urge you all to spend a little time with your breath. Very important. I mean, all of us, you know, the... Our liturgical music is such a treasure for us that we should all, myself included, all of us be constantly striving to sing better, to sing more beautifully, and you know, improve ourselves all the time. So spend some time with your breath, spend some time thinking about releasing your jaw, keeping it nice and loose. And then do some of these things like we did with the tongue consonants. These are very useful for releasing the jaw. L, N, D, and T. Remember to use a mirror occasionally if you have one. It's always useful to practice in front of a mirror. We're not always quite aware of what we're doing. You know, because we're so wrapped up in the act of singing. And the emergence of lower teeth is a sure sign of tension. So you should look like all the time you have no lower teeth. Now, on the other side of this, I want to go through a couple of my handouts here. You'll see a little thing called vocal health. About taking care of your voice. Things to avoid. <clears throat> um, just very quickly, the first one, these things are dry us out. So we want to be sure we're drinking lots of water. If we're drinking citrus juices or caffeinated like tea and coffee, and you all have your water, which Jeff thankfully provided for you. Keep yourselves hydrated. Milk and dairy products of any kind. Not before singing. Don't do it. No cheese, no nothing. Um, now, mostly on Sunday mornings, of course, we're all keeping the fast. But, you know, the other times of the year. Heavy meals, of course. Never drink a heavy meal. I hope, number four, I hope there are no smokers here. Are there smokers here? Good. Good for you. Things like aspirin. Aspirin's a blood thinner. Too much aspirin can actually cause vocal hemorrhaging. So watch your aspirin in intake. Because your vocal cords are little tiny, paper, almost paper thin threads in there. And they can bleed very easily. No talking or yelling. Not much. If you have children. You'll have to figure that out on your own. <laughs> Coughing and clearing your throat. Alcohol. Like I said, this is not something one need 
worry about on a Sunday morning, but I include it just for sake of completeness. <coughs> Be sure you breathe, take in enough air to support the voice. You can keep a bottle of water nearby during the liturgy, just plain water, and sip it when you need to, but be very discreet in handling it. The one thing we don't want on a Sunday morning is... And so maybe you want to get something more sturdy than just a plastic bottle to have your water in. And be sure that you rise on a Sunday morning in time to warm up. Give yourself a little time, even if you just talk in the car or hum in the car on the way, give yourself time to get that voice moving in the morning. Treat any kind of allergies and infections you have promptly. Be kind to your health. Okay, so these are some things about vocal health. Now, we've discussed your voice types. Who here, I would like to know, who here has... Well, what kind of musical experience do you have? Who here plays the piano or the organ? Not well, but I can. You can, okay. Um, who here plays another kind of instrument? Okay, what kind of instrument do you Clarinet. Play? Clarinet, good. Okay, so you, and you've... Guitar. Guitar, okay. You read tab and regular notation? Just regular notation. Regular notation, good. Any other... Musical experiences, yes. I play a percussion. Percussion, good. You've got rhythm, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's some that's a rare quality rhythm. Okay, so we talked about posture. We talked about breathing. Check your canter stand. Like I said, I'm telling my choir all the time. Please stand up because the canter stands low, and they're all doing this. Get yourself up. If you have to hold your book to sing, hold your book up. Not in front of your face, but up like this so you can still see it and keep your posture up. This is vitally important. I can't stress it enough. So, I'd like to do a little bit more singing and talk about some parts of the liturgy. Uh, oh, the solfege. That's the other thing I wanted to ask. Jeff started, I know, with solfege yesterday. How many have done solfeggio previous to that, have sung it? Good. Movable dough, fixed dough. Always, um, dough is always the keynote. I've done movable dough. Movable, good. Movable dough, good. This is a system of singing that, if, another thing I would really encourage you to do is to learn more about solfeggio, and we're going to do some solfeggio exercises to this morning too. It is the best way to develop accuracy and sight reading ability. It's a wonderful, wonderful system. I make, make all of my voice students learn it. It's that vital. So, please stand up. I'm going to give you some drills to go through. These are I think particularly helpful for developing good solfeggio skills. These are called solmization drills. Solmization is a term used in the study of solfeggio just to mean establishing a key or developing a tonal center. There are a few of these that I think are vitally important to help you learn your solfeggio. The first one is a series of skips, chords. If you look at it on the piano, I'm playing right now all in white keys, and I'm just skipping as I go up. I'd like to sing number one. So, as you sing, use what we talked about with posture, hold your paper up here so you can see it. The print's a little small, so hold, keep your head up. Ready? Starting with Do, and do re so re fa la mi so ti fa la do so ti re do. Big breath coming down. Do la fa ti so mi la fa re so mi do fa re ti do. Good. This is an exercise I require all my voice students to memorize. 
totally flat out memorize it. Let's do it again in this key and then we'll try another key. Ready? right in there and when you see skips then in anything you sing you'll be able to go right to them after you do this a few times so I'd encourage you to spend some time with the soul soulization drills now I'm going to give you one other thing here to this these are exercises that are written out with the syllables under them I do several pages of these with my students and then I move them into melodies that don't have the syllables written in. And I think it's a good way to start, an easy way to get used to this system. These are just mostly one to four measure <coughs> melodies. First, it starts with some very simple things. Another thing to memorize is the scale, forwards and backwards. If you've seen The Sound of Music, you probably know it going forwards, but a lot of people do get tripped up coming down. So everybody sing a scale up. Ready? It's number one. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, la. Good. Let's do that again one more time. Don't forget your posture and your breathing. Stay up. Drop your belly to the floor. Take a couple deep breaths again. And release. Yes. I can demonstrate this most better than most because of my physique. You, you could possibly will it to happen. Your stomach would actually hit the top of your shoes. Do it again. Breathe. There we go. Yes, and your posture's up. I didn't see any shoulders moving that time. Let's sing that scale again. Get a big, big breath. Ready? And... sound right up front. Everybody do that again one more time. Let's have this C again. Yell do. Go. Do. do. Oop. Hear that pitch. Yell it right on that pitch. Do it again. Do. There we go. Okay, now I want you to feel like you're on top of that pitch. You're not stretching up for it. You're on top of it. 
Sing this one again, number four. Ready? Do, re, do, re, do. Two. Big breath. Mi, fa, mi, fa, mi. Breathe again. So, la, so, la, so. And breathe. Do, ti, do, ti, do. Good. That's the other thing you saw me do. Everything we sing goes up. We always sing up. And this is perfect for cantors because we're praying. So we got to keep sending that sound up. Especially if we have a descending vocal line. And we're going to look at some examples from our Divine Liturgy book. It is especially important with a descending line to sing up. Otherwise, we'll go flat. And we won't have enough breath to finish it. So, let's do one more of these melodies, just so you get the idea of how these work. And I encourage you to keep doing these um, on your own. Let's do number five. I think you did the interval song yesterday, right? Did you do that? Did you sing it? Yep. So here's a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. And then we step. So here we go. One, two, three. Ready, sing. Do, mi, do. with the lines and spaces of the staff? Mostly? Okay, good. And I think Jeff gave you a handout that had them on it, didn't he? Yep. Good, okay, but I'm not going to bother with that. This is an, an expl explanation of the Solfege system. It's got a lot of information on it. I don't expect you to digest all of this at once but it does help give you a perspective on why we're doing this and how useful it is in singing. So when you have the time, you'll notice um, the first thing they have, I have to talk here is the major scale. Jeff does the minor scale here in the second one. There's two. There's Do minor and La minor. You are learning La minor. So as you go through this today, be sure that you keep in mind that the, the you're doing a la minor when we get to those melodies. Now, let's have a seat again for a second. Do you have your Divine Liturgy books in front of you? So you've already discussed musically what happens... Or, Musically, you have discussed the <coughs> litanies and the responses for the litanies. One of the things I want to do with the litanies is I want to spend some time talking about preparation. Preparation to sing during the course of the litany is a good way to start this. You should plan where you're going to breathe. Have a pencil handy, and if you need to make a mark in your own Divine Liturgy book for a breath mark, you know, do so. But when we're going through the, litur the litany, what are the last words usually that the deacon or the priest says before we respond? Let us pray to the Lord. That is where you're going to mark your breath in the litanies. So as he says, let us pray to the Lord, you're doing this. Lord, and then you start your 
response. You don't want to wait until he gets to let us pray to the Lord and go, Lord, have mercy. Okay. You probably already know this, but I have to explain these things for completeness. So we're going to sing through a little bit of that and learn to prepare. Other things to prepare. Let's take a look at page 14, the first antiphon. <clears throat> Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. There's a very long phrase. Okay. Ideally, we'd like to make it through that in one breath. But if we needed to breathe, where would be the most logical spot to put an additional breath? After the word Theotokos. After the word Theotokos. Why? <coughs> it's after a comma. After a comma. After a comma. Look for punctuation. When you put breaths in your book, if you need to put additional breaths, make sure they make sense from a standpoint of syntax. You know, you don't want to say, through the prayers of the Theotokos. And you wouldn't do that, but make sure it makes sense where you place your breath. This is a good one. Everybody sit, but sit tall. Feel like you're standing from the hips up. And I want to sing through the prayers of the Theodos. See if you can do it one breath. Drop your belly and through the prayers of the Theodos. Try it one more time. If you need to breathe, breathe through, but breathe after Theotokos. Here's a good example. Do not sing down. Save your save us. Send it up. Do that again. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, save your save us. There we go. That was already better. Okay, so I want you to monitor yourself as you're singing. Am I really breathing through everything? Am I really exhaling through everything? Good. Now, let's talk about this litany. Um, very, very easy, of course. We all know this in our sleep. So, sit tall for a second. Now, Every time you see the word let, I want you to do this. Did you see me breathe? Let me do it again. Let. Did you see me breathe? I did. I want you to do that. I want people to look at you. If you're up front, I want you to, people to look at you during the litany and say, they're not breathing. Okay? So be sure that you're prepared and you've got your mouth open. And you're going, let. You're already with your letter L. It makes the singing a lot easier as you go through these things. So, first one. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. From peace, for peace from on high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Yeah, we get so used to these litanies that we toss them off most of the time without thinking about them very much. So, as you do this, this is an excellent place to think about, I have to prepare to sing. Okay? So, let's do some other things here from the book. Uh, to, of course, tomorrow is a big day on the calendar. It's Pentecost, so everybody turn to page 203. Now, will you have um, Divine Liturgy here in the chapel for Pentecost tomorrow, or will you go to a local parish? Okay, good. So let's sing our special hymn. <clears throat> Tone 6. Where else do we sing this? The um, magnification hymn. The magnification hymn. Right. Yes. Good. Everybody. Stand.
expand from the hips. Are you feeling elevated? Now drop your belly and everybody sing this. Ready? Heavenly King of the Dead, Spirit of Truth, everywhere present and doing all things, treasury of blessings, and giver of life, come and dwell within us. Sorry. Comforter. Again, what are you looking for? Commas. 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 Commas and punctuation. Good. So, this is another one too that has several lines of descending. So, I want you to think of breathing through everything. Watch, and when you finish, <coughs> taking that big breath again and keep going. Try it one more time. We're going to sing without the piano. Ready? And. Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, everywhere present and filling all things, treasuring our blessings, and Talking about texts. 